Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like the clock on Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm here with Kurt Davis. Kurt Davis, one of the finest cappers in the land, is coming along with us to help us at BPAL Picks. BPAL Picks on the Patreon. We just picked up a subscriber this morning. I didn't tell you that, Kurt. <laughs> uh, we just picked up a subscriber this morning. Thank you very much, you guys, for coming in and enjoying the fine frolic over there at Patreon where people are making mad scratch. Uh, yeah, we did, uh, we did pretty good yesterday, didn't we, uh, Kurt? Uh, we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about our picks from yesterday, and we're going to throw you a little bit of leans for tonight's game. We have one paid pick that we can't give you, but we're going to try to give you uh, good leans on the, on the game, two games tonight. But mostly we're just going to talk about with our reasonings for our picks yesterday, how we did, and all of those sort of things. Go down to the comment section there and, uh, uh, tell us what your picks were from yesterday, how well you did. We love it. I hit a parlay yesterday. Kurt hit, uh, wait, you did, uh, well, well, Kurt hit, you did pretty well yesterday, right? I did. Uh, I also hit a parlay. Oh, did you hit a parlay? I didn't even know that. Oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. There you go. That parlay yeah. kind of saved me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Five uh, played, uh, uh, paid out uh, 10 to 1. Oh, you're paid 10 to 1. Nice. I had a cheesy parlay. Only paid four times. I call them Perlo parlays, where I do uh, PLs on like PLs on teams that I know that like are going to. Well, we'll get into it when we get into the thing. Let's go over there and check it out, shall we? So we're gonna go over to the NHL uh, network uh, site. It's the best there. I said it. And we're looking at uh, we're starting off with one that we both had right. Uh, we uh, it's a it was a paid pick, uh, one that we didn't give to our in our video, but at least we had the ML right. Bruins and Penguins. Yes. Yeah. Um, also had the over in that game. I didn't make it. Uh, but it happens. Uh, Jory finally played the game that uh, he should be playing, uh, so he looked a lot better. But uh, uh, that was an exciting game to watch. Yeah, you see, I didn't get to watch all this much of this game. Um, oh, I know why. Because I I pay for a product that's supposed to give me all the games, and that game wasn't on anywhere last night. No. So I was a little upset about that. But uh, that's okay. I had other games to watch. It, it worked out all right. But, yeah, Jari, I, I, you, you and I kind of are off on that. I'm kind of a Jari guy. I think he's going to be fine. But... Um, it, Right now, that defense in front of him, plus the fact that I think he's just getting adjusted to being the guy, it may take him a little bit. But last night, apparently, he looked good, as you said, and that bodes well for uh, for them. They gave us a bit of a scare there, the Bruins, as far as the ML is concerned. Uh, Penguins tied it up late, and then the Bruins won it in overtime. Yeah, and the Penguins actually should have won that. They had a two-on-one in overtime, and as usual, they tried to get too fancy, won too many passes, and uh, um, uh, blew it. Yeah. I, and then, and then uh, um, Boston came down in a two on one, and they showed how you don't make as many passes and got the win. Bruins have a tendency to do that, but Penguins have a history of being able to find wins too. But I don't. I think it's not going to be as much this year, and that's your team. That's yep. your team. That's the thing about capping, eh? Like, we get um, – I had a bet uh, – we'll talk about when we get to Winnipeg, Edmonton. I'm also a Philadelphia Flyers fan. But when you have a bet against your team, it's it sucks to watch those games. <laughs> 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 okay, let's get to uh, Sabres versus the Rangers. Um, I had a slight lean to the ML here. Uh yeah, I think you like the over and the Sabres as well, right? Correct. Um, both of us said that our gut was uh, Buffalo's playing a lot better this year. Uh, the Rangers have owned Buffalo in Buffalo. Um, uh, I wound up taking the Rangers uh, plus one and a half in the uh, parlay and hit that. Um, uh, missed the over, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I got. I didn't put anything in on that game but I did have a lean on the Sabres to win. Um, 
I don't know why I couldn't pull the trigger there. I think I just have a, I got to, I got to remove a little bit of uh, an affinity for the Rangers because I like young teams, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I think the reason why I didn't pull the trigger on that is I kind of want the Rangers to win because they're a young team and all of that. So I got to kind of think about that in the future. Uh, trying to remove emotions from your capping is the best way to cap. Just oh. straight practical, right, Kurt? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes they still creep in, though. <laughs> uh, Flyers versus the Devils. I think you did a haymaker on this one, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, I had Flyers and over. Uh, that was a exciting game. Um, trying to see what my notes are. <laughs> yeah, Wedgwood uh, was... Wedgwood was back in there, and uh, I, I was concerned about... I was leaning the over here, too. Um, I'm a Flyers fan, so I, w I of course, wanted Philadelphia to win. Um, and their, de their defense has just been not very good, Philadelphia. And I don't think it was really great last night, but their offense came out to be able to uh, support that a little bit. Being a hockey fan, you know, and you don't have to like a team or not, but to, to see that kid McGloy get his first uh, NHL goal and uh, uh, his uh, excitement afterwards uh, just put goosebumps on my arms. Uh, I love to see stuff like that. Yeah, I we, yeah, especially uh, a guy like McLeod who is a is a young player, but he's he's drafted to be a character player. It's very rare that. A player is considered almost a pretty much a for sure prospect, even though he's likely never going to put too much offense up. But that's those kind of guys everybody roots for because that means this guy works his butt off everywhere he goes. Uh, he's got all the intangibles in the room and all everything, and you just can't help but love those players, right? Oh yeah, it, it's almost like uh, they won the game. <laughs> uh, the whole team was excited for him. It, it was exciting to watch. I, I love to see stuff like that. I don't care what team it is. <laughs> yeah, he's future captain material. Uh, even if he plays, probably going to be a third liner, somewhere like that. Never going to put up huge points. But, I mean, sacrifice the body and do everything that every fan loves to see a guy like that do. He does in spades, so... Uh, it's fun to watch him get his first goal, no doubt about it. And I'm sure it was a big boost in the, for New Jersey, even though they lost that game, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Capitals versus Islanders. I had the under on this game. However, Same. we were both on the ML for the Islanders on this game, were we? Yeah. Um, uh, the... Uh, the I only got to see the highlights in that game, but uh, both goalies made some phenomenal saves in that game. That that was a hard-fought game. And you got to think, uh, the only re reason I can think that the Islanders even lost that, I think is in their head and they put so much pressure on themselves. That for Washington, and um, who they lost another player last night to injury. Um, uh, so... Uh, being one of the healthiest teams the last few years, uh, Washington's in trouble right now. Um, it, it's something to keep an eye on. Oh, I didn't know that they lost another guy to injury. I'm going to look that up. Uh, do you, you don't remember his name? I'll, I'll find it in, in just a second. I go to Roto World, Roto World Injuries. It's the best there. I said it. Uh, I love their updates and the way they have their layout on Roto World. is so easy to, to, to read. And uh, they update, and not only that, they give you like little cap, like update caps. You just press the little yellow thing, and you know when there's a new update for each player and stuff like that. It's a great site. Uh, Washington, okay. Oh, it's not showing up here yet. Whoever that was, I know Wilson was out. Is that who you're talking about? Because uh, no, um, wasn't Wilson. I don't think. Uh, give me a second. Uh... Super. Odd for them to not have an update like that. But while you're talking there, yeah, like when you when yep. for me when I get last year getting the Islanders at five and a half was like a hundred percent bet under, right? Um, and this year they're giving you five and a half every game so far. It's money. Oh. 
Oh, wait, here it is. Hold on. Um, was it Backstrom? Did Backstrom get hurt now? No. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Yeah. yeah uh, wow. That would be devastating for them. Yeah, uh, they actually lost... Um, they, they've lost three centers now, uh, but the, yeah, yeah um, oh, it was Ella that I was thinking of got hurt last night. Okay, well, maybe he's okay because it's not showing up on the injury report today on Roto World, and they're usually right on top of it, but maybe they're also just getting some sort of confirmation of how bad it is, so hopefully for their sake, they're not losing Ella too. Because, uh, well, I mean, for our sake, it's great for capping. <laughs> Just yeah. bet, against, bet, to... bet against Washington for a while. Yeah, um, both of them were head injuries, too. Wow. So they're probably definitely going to have the next game probably on uh, concussion protocol. Yeah, we'll see. All right, that's the whole thing. They're probably waiting for that protocol to see if, because uh, if it's a head injury, they, they go on to see what they are when they wake up in, in, the, in the morning. It's actually the longer it takes, the better. Oh, you know what was also interesting? I didn't even realize it. That's the first time Trotz has lost at Washington since he left uh, the Stanley Cup team. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, actually, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. Um, I am a little concerned about the Islanders. You know, when I was in concern, we were concerned about their defense after they lost Boychuk and they traded away Taze. And uh, it looks like it is kind of an issue going right now. Uh, they're playing Dobson a lot. He's a young kid. He's playing well, uh, pretty well, but he's still a young kid. And, and it, it, it's not ideal. Let's just put it that way. Um, anyways, let's go to uh, the Panthers and Blue Jackets get this one out of the way what i mean by that is i hate oh, i hate I, I hated this game last night i had the blue jackets to ml and the under and three set it was three two with three seconds left florida screwed both of those plays yep oh. uh, i had the under that game i didn't pull the trigger um on florida but uh, i had the under on that game i'm like you've got to be kidding me <laughs> Yeah. But that's what it should be. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it happens in every sport, including hockey. <laughs> yeah, the good thing, like I said, when you get things like that, the way I like to look at it is I, I had the right play. Oh, absolutely. It's a better way to look at it is just you had the right play. You learn. You're not really learning much from that. I make that play every day, all day. It's just not – It's. Um, like Blue Jackets versus Panthers under five and a half is going to go under – 80 85 percent of the time but that's mm -hmm. still 20 to 15 percent of the time it's not going to go under so it's just going to happen and uh that's just the way it is there's nothing you can do about it you you, you got you know, it's all about playing the percentages you're not going to win every one right and, and florida uh, i will say florida outplayed them i mean uh, they outshot them like 31 to 22 yeah which is what columbus is known for that though right that's the reason why yeah. columbus does so well They've got a system where they can get outplayed and they still win games. And they can, I mean, you saw it in the playoffs. They got outplayed lots in the playoffs and they still yep. won. Uh, and that's, that's just the way uh, Toronto's system works. They have a defensive system that keeps teams, when they're tired, they push teams to where they got to shoot that the goaltender is going to have a best chance of saving it. So they play to their goaltender's weaknesses and strengths. And uh, Tortorella seems to be able to uh, teach their players to do this at an incredibly high level. And um, you were saying three seconds. I was thinking it's just like one second left uh, on that game that they won it on in that. And they wound up setting a franchise record. That's the first time in franchise history they, uh, they were starting 3-0 and for the season. Yeah. Crazy, eh? And uh, before the season started uh, with uh, Joe from Pro Joe and I did a uh, piece on the Florida Panthers there. And we were actually fairly um, high on them in the sense that I thought there was a really good opportunity. The culture could change a lot in that room 
with Hornquist and Gudas and uh, stuff like that, that you could see a surprise out of them. And so far, it's looking like that is possible. I mean, it's only three games in the season, but we'll see. Um, Bob Rofsky has Bob got to be feeling good after winning that game, uh, for sure. Now, being a Pittsburgh fan, uh, we hated to lose Hornquist. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, the, we, 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 we're talking about with uh, that kid McLeod. Hornquist does all that, and he can pot, you know, 40 to 50 points for you. I don't know if he's going to do that again this year. Like, he's getting up there, but there's no better teammate and uh, work ethic than Hornquist. Mm -hmm. For sure. So that should work. And that was really the problem with Florida, is they, there was a culture issue there. They didn't have pushback. And I like to call it pushback. Pushback is the most important thing in hockey. When you get down, you got to. Uh, when you go down a little bit, you got to be able to push back in some way, physically, something. It's all. It's 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 probably the biggest game when it comes to uh, dominating the other side in in various fashions and uh, having. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't come to me, but. Um, that's why you have fights and stuff like that. It's you actually have to feel like you're you make the team feel like you're physically dominating them. Very, it's a very important part of the game. Um, so next game we have Nashville and Chicago, and uh, this is not quite as upsetting as the Blue Jackets one, but Malcolm Subban stopped more shots last night than I think he stopped all year last year. I'm being a little bit tongue-in-cheek there. But, I mean, he's been a terrible goaltender for quite a while now, and he happens to show up and act like Marc-Andre Fleury last night when I have the over on this game. So, yeah, whatever. What, yeah. what did you have on this? Same thing, right? About that yesterday in the uh, video, um, uh, I just wasn't going to play that game. I, I do... I actually have a um, uh, a top pick in that game tonight. Do you? I do. Oh, we'll talk. Okay. Well, I don't know if we can give it then if it's going to be going to our patrons. But uh, really, you have a, well, you have a top pick on that, really. Do and and I'll I'll explain it. It's actually going to be a free win on my end. <laughs> How's that? Okay, that's a bit fady for me, but you must have some trends then. I would have to think. Uh, I think we both did lean to Nashville in that on the ML, but I did. I, I wasn't going to pull the trigger on it. So we'll head off to the next game: uh, Jets versus Oilers. I had the Jets to win this game, and uh, I believe you had the Jets and the over on this, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, that was, yep. that was a good one for you. Uh, yeah, I think we got to be like I think we got to really be concerned about the Oilers this year so far. Uh, yeah. this team doesn't look like it's progressing much past last year so far where the Jets on the other hand I had them out of the playoffs but I'm, but Paul Maurice it could be his year for coach of the year I don't know if he's had one in the past I don't think so but this could be his year for coach of the year if he, if he with, with the whole thing that happened with Lion A uh, their defense didn't improve all that much it's kind of hard for a coach to win coach of the year with Hollebuck in net, but this could be the year because I don't know of anyone that had the Jets making the playoffs this year. No. Nah. Um, I know uh, I love watching Edmonton uh, McDavid. Uh, yeah, sure. He, what, his puck handling is so fun to watch. is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's sick it's really like unbelievable uh how he uh, how fast he can skate with the puck on his stick too fastest i've ever seen uh the only one that comes to mind that even comes close was uh either Bure or solani uh but those two but even he's even more powerful the powerful stride he has like from from zero to 60 it's insane He's, he's at the red line moving, not even moving, and the next thing you know, he's just flying by people. And the Oilers can't win games with this guy in the lineup. And Dreisaitl, too. Like, 
there is something I, com you don't need much of a lineup around those two to win games, right? No. Nope. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, Kings versus Wild. I had the Kings on this. I don't know why you and I both took the over on this, and we can't explain why we did, did we? <laughs> Um, no, uh, but uh, we didn't have a goalie confirmation at that point either. And uh, I, I love that Peterson goalie. Uh, uh, he actually got his first win last night. First win of this year, yeah. Of this season. Yeah. I, he was out a little bit, I think. Um, so I think this might have only been his second game. I could be wrong about that. But well, and then, I'll tell you the, the reason that game didn't go over, too, is uh, – is uh, Minnesota's power play? Uh, I think they're the worst in the uh, league right now. They're zero and thirteen on power play. Yeah, that's not surprising since they don't really have centers there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Nick Benino is their second line center, and who's their number one center? They don't really they don't have a number one center, and their young kid that they picked up in the draft this year he's injured already, uh, Rossi. So. That's hard to get power play goals without a center. It's like the mm. most important part of the power play, really. Uh, so mm. I, it doesn't really surprise me that they're not hitting on. But they're hitting well on five on five. Um, however, the Kings are just playing a great all-around game. I just love their game. Uh, yeah, they, tell me a while back. Uh, that's your dark horse to make the playoffs. Yeah, it is my dark horse to make the playoffs. Um, I I had the I had the Kings making it in this division. Uh, I don't know too many people that had them making it in this division. I'm a huge McClellan fan. Uh, I I I love him. I put him up there with uh, the, some of the guys we're talking about, Trotz and uh, Tortorella, and the great coaches in the league. Um, in, when he was in Edmonton, he, he got a lot of the blame for how poorly the Edmonton Oilers did. And I was doing videos at the time saying that if uh, the Oilers can't win with McClellan, then there's something fundamentally wrong with this organization. And uh, most of the people were still blaming McClellan all the way out. And then he goes to L.A. and I did a video where I said, just watch what happens to L.A. here. Because that's an organization that has their crap together. That they are drafting extremely well. Their player development is fantastic, and uh, they're and uh, sure enough, LA is growing at a very fast pace and becoming what I see as a championship level team probably in the next couple of years. Well, I'll tell you what's dangerous also is uh, their goalie situation with with Peterson. You know, he's going to get a lot more ice this time, and I liked him last year. But I think he's going to take a lot of pressure off a of quick. Quick was overworked last year. I mean, they just overworked him. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, I think if uh, he gets the breaks he needs this year, uh, he's going to be the quick we've always known. Yeah, I mean, he's played fantastic this year too. He's had a sec. Uh, I think that he's kind of relaxed a little bit now that Peterson looks like he's going to be the number one guy. And uh, he, you know, it's possible he could move on yet too. But I, I have a feeling they're going to keep him there. And just let him retire there. I hope so because uh, that would be great for him. Uh, unless he wants to go for a cup somewhere else, I wouldn't say LA is a cup contender this year. But no. uh, you know, I don't know how long, much longer he can play. He's 35. It'll be interesting to see if he sees what I see. He may stick around because I don't think LA is going to be rebuilding much longer. I think they're going to be adding to this lineup pretty soon. Uh, next game we'll go to is kind of a kicker too, but it did. I did have it as part of my uh, my parlay that I got last night. Uh, that would be the king, or sorry, the stars and the Red Wings. Um, I think the big uh, thing in this game was the Red Wings actually evened uh, the Stars in shots. And uh, looked pretty good against a Stars team that just beat the crap out of Nashville the last two games. Now, the Stars were playing three games in four nights. But it was like the beginning of the season, three game, four nights. I thought they should have looked better than they did last night. Uh, something to watch. A little concerning. However, their roster is pretty depleted without Jamie Benn and Sagan. So they probably they had guys playing that maybe aren't used to the NHL. 
and uh, might have got a little tired yesterday. But I had yeah, – watching, watching the highlights of that game, they uh, they actually looked tired. They hmm. did look tired, yeah. And maybe they – maybe after uh, uh, Trounce and the Predators, they were a little ahead of themselves with the wings. Yeah, uh, we should have jumped on the under on that game. I didn't touch. I didn't touch the game at all. I had uh, now. I had Dallas in a, a parlay. Uh, thank goodness, just on the money line. But yeah, uh, 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 but uh, we should be looking at all unders on a game. Um, I think with Dallas, they're getting up there like uh, the Islanders. I mean, they, they got the best uh, goalie combination in the NHL, in my opinion. Yeah, well, when Bishop is in. Uh, but Bishop is hurt. But um, not only that, we, you were saying yesterday on the video, and I, I, I can't remember if it was on the video or before we started uh, the video, where you said it's unlikely that the Red Wings are going to score enough, even if the Stars do run up the score a bit. And I, I right. think it was a six, wasn't it? Or was it a five and a half? Uh, it was a five and a half. Um, uh, but I... I like I said, you know, Detroit's, uh, what, the lowest scoring team right now, um, year to date? Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. And two goals a game. So, you know, and with uh, Dallas's uh, goalies and that, uh, it, I was scared that they couldn't score at all uh, and that. So, um, yeah, you said that, and I was like, yeah, I really like that. And then for some reason, I completely forgot to put it on Patreon. I, I flipped, I, it, I thought I put it in. And then the game started, and I'm like, okay, what did I put in? I, I put that under, and I flip, flip, flip. Sure enough, I didn't put it in. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a kick. Because I really like that play. And uh, you ever get to the end of the game and say, yeah, I won that. And you go back and check your uh, picks that you put in and everything. Well, where's my pick on that game? <laughs> uh, I did like Grice uh, being in net, too. He's had a strong start to his year. He's playing to get uh, on a better team at the trade deadline, I think. Um, and uh, it looks like the way he's going right now, that should have, they should have no problems getting a little value out of him at the trade deadline, and he can run for a cup. Uh, he also still wants to be a number one somewhere. Maybe somebody should give him a shot uh, because uh, he, he, he's, he's had a good last couple of years on the island. And I think he left the island a lot to do with the fact that the stigma is that trot system is the reason why you're good. Mm-hmm. So he goes to a team like Detroit and he puts up good numbers. That bodes well for his next contract, right? Oh yeah, and and, and um, his record proves itself. He's got to be considered uh, one of the top three backup uh, goalies uh, in, the in the league. For sure, for sure, no doubt about it. Okay, let's go to the Blues and Golden Knights. Uh, I faded this game. I believe you did too. I did have a slight lean on the Golden Knights. Did you have the over on this? Um, no, I didn't touch the game at all. Um, I just it, it, didn't know which Binghamton was going to show up. Um, so I, I just didn't touch it. Um, I wanted to see how the game played out. Um, I actually tried to get in on it live in the third period, uh, but... Uh, at that point, uh, they cut off uh, live on all the games. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, they. Yeah, oh, for okay. It was too late. It was too late. late. They cut it off already. Yeah, I think for Capra's comparison and uh, Capra's comparison, it's a, it's a uh, range from Capra's comparison. He does a great job over there. Go check it out. Maybe I'll put the link down in the bio. Uh, he uh, he takes a whole bunch of cappers, his favorite cappers, and we just happen to be one of his favorites. Well, probably because he's a patron. He, he's a paid customer, too. That was funny when I didn't know he was a paid customer for a long time after. I was watching cappers' comparison all the time, and uh, then I found out that he, he, I, he, he messaged me and said, Hey, how you doing? Uh because I, I talk about him in my videos before I knew he was a patron. He said, thanks for talking to me about my, in my videos. And I was like, who are you? And he goes, oh, I'm, I'm the guy from Capra's Comparison. Oh, wow. So he's been a client of mine before I even knew it. But I love his show. I highly recommend you go check it out. But I, ha- I did take the Golden Knights and the over on that. I gave him that. Because he gives you four games to, to cap. And you don't know if it's a paid pick. I quite often will just tell him, and he won't do it. But if it's not, 
I'll, I'll put something in for it, just a lean. And I had both of those, so. Well, and, and you know, what's funny is uh, their uh, Stanley Cup year, you know, they were a complete under team, but uh, they've been trending on the overs. And uh, I, I kept trying to figure out why is it trending over, and I finally figured it out. Um, it's uh, penalties. They're the most penalized team so far this year. Blues, and uh, uh, time you have a uh, high penalized team, uh, it trends over. Uh, so. Yeah, that's my insight of why their games are going over right also now. Also, goaltending. Bennington has it has been weak, and uh, their backup goaltender is like, Huso is. I don't know what the heck they were thinking when the, <laughs> when they didn't get a goaltender. Huso didn't even put good numbers in the AHL. So, I I think they're hoping they can hold on until midway through the season and maybe pick up a guy like I was just talking about in Grace. Well, I can tell you this. As long as I keep playing Huso, I'm going to keep making some money. <laughs> okay, Maple Leafs versus Flames. I had the Leafs to win this game, but I didn't have put it in because they should be tired, as I keep on saying about the Leafs, but they keep on coming through. Uh, they did get kind of outplayed by the Flames last night in various aspects of the game. They they're, they're, didn't look like they had as much of a jump of the step as they usually do, but they did get her done. Uh, you didn't have a play on this, but did you, you had leans on this? Uh, well, I, I actually had a small play. Um, I, I leaned Calgary. I didn't pull the trigger because um, uh, Toronto, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, the pieces that they put in on offseason, um, you would never think that you would uh, associate defense with Toronto, but uh, uh, their defense has really come around this year. But uh, I had a, a small play on the over. Oh, that's good. You got the over. Okay. Being back to uh, was that a back to back hit? Uh, oh, hold on. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. uh back to back games. Uh, I, I look at a lot of overs uh, because uh, tired legs uh, as a rule of thumb uh, leads to higher scoring games. It's funny, you know. I think it can lead to higher scoring games, but. Um, it, uh, it, sh it, I think it cannot. It depends on who. Two tired teams, maybe. Yeah, I would say that. But if one team's tired and another team's not, I would say no. Because, like, say the Colorado Avalanche, if they're tired, it takes the sting off their shots. So a team like Anaheim has a better chance of beating them, right? If if Anaheim themselves yeah. aren't tired, but if two, if they're two tired teams. You can see it because, uh, I don't know why, just because their head's not in the game and they kind of pass, uh, make a lot of turnovers and stuff like that. It's choppy. The oh. game becomes choppy. Yeah, I understand the, the sting not on the shot and that, but the, uh, the offense just has the, the advantage uh, when all legs are tired. Uh, it's easier to focus going forward than to focus going backwards, in my opinion. But uh, now, that's, The Flames, the that's, Flames should have won this game because they were the, the Maple Leafs were tired. The score, yeah. if it was going to be over, should have been like 4-2 the Flames. And uh, it really doesn't bode well for the Flames. I watched the after game, and they talked to, uh, oh, the coach there. Why do I always forget his name? He was a defenseman in the NHL. And every time I think about him, it's a mental thing. But every time I think, oh, Ward, Jeff Ward, he looked pretty depressed, like, down he looked <coughs> really disappointed the flames to uh in the flames the way the flames are playing early uh and i don't blame him he's a good coach he's a really good coach i think he's going to be fine i don't know if he's going to stay in calgary but i personally think the flames need to redo that whole lineup well i i, I wouldn't want to have been in the locker room uh uh there, there's no excuse to lose two games in a row to Toronto at home. To a tired Toronto team that's playing like yeah. crap loads of games. Uh, yeah. you, you, there's no, yeah, and especially the way they lost them. But um, I'll talk about more of that. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be going live at noon today on uh, um, the Perlo show that I do for SteelFlyers.com, SteelFlyers All Sports Network. Dot com. It's not a Flyers site in a Steelers flight. The guy's name is Steel Flyers. Um, it's an all sports network, and I do a live show five days a week between 12 and uh, 2 Mountain Time, 2 and 4 Eastern, and I'd love to see you out there. 
Uh, it's fun. It's interactive. You can chat and everything. And we talk about all the games from the night before and games coming up and all the news in the NHL. So I'd highly rec I'd love to see you there. Uh, Avalanche versus Sharks. Um, we had Avalanche all day here, uh, right? And the over. I had the over as well. You, got, you, you had the over and the Avalanche as well, right? And again, uh, you know, 10 goals in that game, there's 30 minutes of penalties in that game. <laughs> yeah. That's where the score can get run up if teams are tired because they hook more. So there's more penalties that happen. Yeah. That's why when you see, like, if you're playing against a tired team, you don't want to be taking penalties because that's the way they're going to beat you is on the power play where they use le the least amount of effort and have the most a chance to score. That's what I love about the Columbus Blue Jackets. They play against, even when they're tired or if the opposition's tired, they don't take penalties because the, they don't want to give the opposition an opportunity to score easy. So that, oh, so that can run up the play, run it up a bit. Back in that Toronto game, um, uh, Mitchell Marner's uh, goal, he's he's tied in the league uh, for the most points uh, right now uh, with uh, Connor McDavid. Uh, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, sort of. I mean, Mitch Marner's got a game like Marshawn in Boston. There's no doubt he can pull 100 to 120 points one of these seasons. So. Uh, he's an incredible hockey player, incredible hockey player, for sure. But uh, it doesn't really surprise me that much. He gets a lot of opportunity to score. He's got great line mates. So um, it doesn't surprise me too much. Uh, but Toronto has surprised me in the sense I thought they were going to be good. I picked them second in the north. But they're even better than I anticipated, for sure. So we'll go to the, so go we'll go to the money play. The money play for sure was the Ducks and Coyotes under. That's like a 97% play, right? Oh, my gosh. And if you saw the highlights of that game, I mean, both goalies stood on their head. I, I mean, I I could not believe some of the saves that the, uh, each of them made. That, I wish I'd have been at that game. I wish I could have watched the whole game. But the, uh, just watching the highlights of being a hockey fan, and um, my hat's off to both goalies. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gibson and Kemper. I uh, I think Gibson's the best goaltender in the league, and Kemper could be close. It would be interesting to see what both of those t goalies could do on better teams. Uh, mm -hmm. But both of those, and maybe teams that play a little less defensively, like where they rely completely on playing defensively to see if they could put his equal numbers up. But when you've got two teams that can't score – with two of the top five goaltenders in the league, I'm going to say conservatively top five uh, goaltenders in the league, that smells like an under to me. <laughs> yep. And it sure was. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's absolutely our top pick when we talked yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was like, put all the pearls on this game. If you only bet one game tonight, this is the one right here. By the way, Toronto's in first place right now, but that, that, that is mostly because uh, Montreal was idle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we'll get now to tomorrow's or tonight's plays. And you, you last night you were kind of fading this game, and now you got to play for the Blackhawks and Predators. Yeah, uh, you've got your backup goalie uh, for. Um, well, I think he's backup uh, with uh, Sorrow, right? Well, uh, he's there. He's they're playing him as their number one right now, but they're both pretty not good. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I go back to uh, tired legs, back-to-back -back games. Uh, they got the five yesterday. Um, I see this easily hitting six, uh, which leads to um, a free pick uh, that a lot of people don't play. Uh, I like the Grand Salami over 11.5 today. For both games, the Blackhawks, Predators, right. and Ottawa Senators, Canucks. Yeah, that could, uh, that tough, uh, yeah. Now again, check the site if you can find it for eleven and a half out there. Because on my my go to bet three six five, they've got the salami as twelve and a half. So uh, I'm not so bullish on that. But if you can find it at eleven and a half, uh, not bad. Now we're gonna give them out um, the. Uh, 
on the game, you think that uh, you obviously would be leaning over then? Correct. Uh, that's a strong uh, play, and it's probably going to make top pick. Uh, you know, I always wait for goalie confirmation. So anytime we do these videos, uh, they I hope everybody understands their leans, and the change it could change during the day. Uh, uh, once there's goalie confirmation, I would never make a, a bet blind, blindly uh, without uh, feeling really good at who's going to be in goal. Yeah, I'm pa I'm almost positive it's going to be Lankinen and Saros. Um, I would lean to the over here as well, but I'm not going to play it. As far as the game itself, I'd lean. Um, I would lean uh, uh, Chicago plus one and a half. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the way. Yeah, Chicago plus one and a half if you're going to play it. I think they're paying one seventy two on that, right? Something like that. One seventy. Uh, what's the American on that? Two thirty or something like that. Um, hold on, I'll tell you in just a minute. Um, but uh, I like that goalie. I think we talked the other day that uh, uh, I think it's actually got a future goalie on their hands now. Yeah, that would be the reason why, although the Blackhawks are very beat up. The reason why I kind of shy away from the over here is there, that the Blackhawks are out so many players uh, as far as injuries are concerned, uh, Debrinkat being a big one. And uh, a lot of their scores are hurt right now. That's about the um, Debrinkat, Taves, Doc, Nylander. Like, oh, they're just t terribly beat up uh, as far as injuries are concerned. But I can see it because I'm not a fan of Saros. And he's struggled this year. Uh, and the Predators so far this year have shown, si uh, shown very uninspired hockey. So... I like the Chicago at least to keep it close nonetheless. I, I kind of like that play. I might even put it in as a play. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But so far, I haven't. So there you go. Well, that should take Chicago. I mean, uh, there's no way uh, I'm going to risk 175 on Nashville, even at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chicago's plus 150. So um, there's great value there. And um, uh, plus one and a half is minus 170. Um you know, if all you're betting is hockey, uh, you know, the way the odds are today, uh, really the best way is to parlay it with something because, uh, you know, the juice is heavy on the games. And when you only got a few games, you got to be careful on uh, how you bet it because uh, let's say you take a, a heavy favorite of minus 200 and you lose that bet, it takes four games to make that up. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So, I don't mind doing that when the percentages are like 95% to win. I, I'll, I'll make that play. Uh, but the percentages have to be very high. Uh, there's certain games where I have very seldom got burnt on those. But it does happen. It does happen uh, every once in a while. But if it's a 95% play, I'm going to hit 95% of the time. So if I lose, I'm looking at the long term, right? Long term, I'm going to be up on that play, so that's why that's the way I look at it. But I now, the more I think about it, the more I might have just given you a paid pick because I, if you, if Chicago's getting 172 at plus one, that is some pretty high odds that they keep it to one goal at least. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that play. Okay, we do have for the next game. Let's move on to our last game for tomorrow. Um, I got we got I got a line on I got a game on the line here, so I'm our, our pick on the line. So that's a paid pick. I'm gonna keep that for the, my paid customers. So let's look at the over under on the Ottawa Vancouver game, my friend. Yeah, um, I, strong uh, strong lean to the over. Uh, again, um, penalty minutes. Uh, uh, Ottawa's uh, on the top four teams um, in penalty minutes. So, uh, Anytime I have an Ottawa team, uh, I'm going to look at the overs. Yeah, the problem with that, with the over on that one, is I just um, I don't know after watching Ottawa for this long now, I've had a pretty good sample size, if they're going to be able to score enough to get that over. I could see this being like four nothing, something like that. That's I I kind of lean to the over. Because if uh, if Holtby doesn't have a strong game, Ottawa can pot two, you know, and then Vancouver might be able to get five or six. But 
But my over is at six and a half. Is yours at six and a half? Um, tell you real quick. It was jumping around. It opened up at six, I believe. But um, yeah, it, it's six and a half. Okay, yeah, so I got a strong, we went 45 minutes on this. We got to finish her up. Well, boys and girls, thank you very much. There's your picks for today. Uh, I'll write down in the bottom where the picks are so people can go to where the picks are rather than listen to all of us if they don't want to hear it. This has been awesome. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.